Welcome to a new series entitled Pull the Curtain Stories from the Show. Each video in this series will give a background to each of the Chicago concerts I have been to starting from the oldest to the most recent. In every video I'll go down the bullet points and discuss each until I reach the conclusion of the video. Let's begin with episode 3. Location. This location is an interesting place. Uh, it is in Houston, Texas, and more specifically North Houston. Um, taking I-45 North, you hit the Woodlands, and the Woodlands is a, a really fancy uh, city, uh, you know, where it's um, more upscale city, you know, upper 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 class and upper middle upper middle class there uh, people and the location was the Cynthia Mitchell Woods Pavilion uh, an outdoors pavilion uh, that is great for watching concerts um, there are multiple sections which uh, I will show in, in this photo here and um, it uh, it also has uh, like a, a grassy uh, or the grass where you can set up a, a, a blanket and or some lawn chairs and sit up there. I think either for free or it's um, a cheaper price. Uh, but the it's great for the fall for in Texas. It's great for the fall and uh, and maybe early spring in the springtime but of course they like to do concerts during the summer in Texas and uh, that was uh, it was a pretty hot pretty hot time especially for um, I believe the ticket was June uh, or it was the ticket was during the summer and it was it was already a scorcher even though it was 2012 and thankfully um, when I got to I was there early, so I always tried to get to the concerts as early as possible, just so I can hang out and look around and, and just get an idea of you know of the land there. But thankfully, right uh, at the gates, at the very at the very um, the very uh, opening uh, where where the gates are, there's like a, a House of Blues bar right next to the Cynthia Mitchell Woods Pavilion opening gate. And, you know, the door was open, the bar was open, so I went in there and it was cool. The AC was really cool and there was, uh, you know, like these old Gator, like five gallon, or I don't know how, was it 10, 15, 20 gallon Gatorade things where, you know, it would have the Gatorade and you would dump the Gatorade on the coach kind of thing. Those were filled with water. So I was able to, to stay hydrated and cool while, while waiting for the doors to open. And uh, as soon as, you know, the time came for the doors to open, we were able to leave uh, outside, actually, which is pretty cool, outside of the uh, House of Blues exit. Uh, there, they would check our tickets instead of having to go back outside the main entrance to get in line to, to wait. So that was a pretty cool thing that I remember from that concert. Uh, the next thing was um, the seat and the fans. So... The seat was in section 101, which, uh, if you remember, um, actually, yeah, I'll leave that picture up just so you can see where 101 is. And um, the fans there were pretty were pretty cool. Uh, I remember talking to to one of the two one or two fans there, and I believe it was at this um, at this concert um, where. Um, you know, I had a pretty cool conversation with someone in front of me, and we were just talking about, you know, Chicago back in the 60s and 70s, and some of their great music, and how I, you know, at that time, it was very, very small, but I collected uh, vinyl compared to now. Now there's hundreds. Back then I had probably in the teens um, of collecting Chicago vinyl, but, uh, it was they were pretty cool and the seat was in section 101 row h seat one as you see as you'll see in, in the ticket later on but um and in this picture you'll sort of get an idea of how close to the stage it was 
it was on the left side of the stage um, and you know middle of section 101 it was row H so it was right in the middle of that but it was it was a great seat and I remember uh, looking up at an angle you know to my right to my right front and looking at the band and, and listening to everything and it was it was fantastic and at this point the band had not changed uh, going into the next section the bands plural uh, the band, uh, Chicago band had not changed since the previous year when I saw them uh, in Austin at the Moody Theater. Um, and it had uh, Ray Herman uh, on, on the saxophone and Lou Pardini again on the keyboards. And it still had um, uh, Jason Chef uh, for lead vocals and on the bass guitar. But this time, this is the first time where there was a, uh, um, I would see Chicago share the stage with another band. And the other band was the Doobie Brothers. And oh boy, seeing the Doobie Brothers and listening to the Doobie Brothers, not with Michael McDonald, but with the original, uh, original lead singer and um, the original front man, uh, founder founder of one of the original founders of the doobie brothers tom johnston uh listening to him was pretty awesome uh hear some of the old classic hits of um the doobie brothers uh like jesus is just all right with me that was a great tune that i loved and uh black water i believe they played black water so that was a great song and seeing uh them on stage it was it was pretty cool because this was the first time I've ever seen where it was half half Doobie Brothers, half Chicago. Then the Doobie Brothers would come on again at the end, and uh, they would share the stage with Chicago, and uh, they both would sing each other's songs, and they would both uh, uh, take turns singing each other's songs. And I believe the last song that. Uh, that they played was 25 or 6 to 4 and both bands were, were playing that song and uh, they were it sounded great I mean having um, having the, that first experience of, of both bands taking the stage and, and uh, sharing uh, having their own time which was cut in half I think it was about like an hour a piece uh, for each band and then it was about another 15 to 30 minutes together playing each other's greatest hits on stage um but seeing them seeing the concert cut in half was a pretty cool experience i must say uh the last thing is memorabilia and uh, i'll show here that uh, i got as always um from every chicago concert i always try to keep the ticket stub or the printout of the um, of the ticket from from uh, what's it called? Uh, I forgot what it's called, but that that company that's you know that sells the tickets. Um, but as you see here, this is the ticket stub from from the concert, and it does say Chicago and Doobie Brothers 2012 live in concert at the Cynthia Mitchell Woods Pavilion, and the um, uh, as like I said before the t-shirt the t-shirt's pretty cool too it's a it's a uh, shared shirt pretty much that's why I liked it because at the um, at the uh, concession not concession but memorabilia stand with the tables where they sold the t-shirts and everything else they had like individual shirts where it'd be like one was strictly Chicago the other one was strictly Doobie Brothers this one here it had Chicago but it also included the Doobie Brothers and their like logo uh, on the back and I tried to take it as close as um, close up as much as possible without it becoming uh, you know pixelated but it's a pretty cool logo of of the uh, of the Doobie Brothers logo in there which is like the eagle uh, I believe or a bird and the the title of of the tour was called uh, Made in the USA Tour 2012, which is pretty cool. And um, it shows the front, of course, has the Chicago logo, but on the back, it shows Chicago with the Doobie Brothers and and Chicago by itself, the tour dates. So 
I like that shirt a lot, so that's why I bought it. One last story before I go regarding memorabilia. Um, there was a, a stand there where I, I could, um, if I was to sign up for a newspaper subscription, they would give me a, uh, a free t-shirt of my choosing. I think they had like three or four there. So um, there was, because there would, there would be a time and coming up on uh, the next one or two uh, t uh, concerts later, um, I will, I would have uh, included and um, uh, invited family members to the Chicago concerts. But the shirt I got, uh, so I ended up getting a newspaper subscription for about a year, but I got a free t-shirt in the process. It was a pink shirt. It said Chicago on it, and it had the uh, breast cancer awareness, which was the heart with the pink ribbon on it. And I gave it to my mom, um, who was a, a breast cancer survivor um, for over, of course, 10, 15 years now. And, uh, you know, thank God for that. So I... I I took the plunge and I got the uh, newspaper subscription, but I got the free t-shirt and uh, I sent it uh, to her and she was uh, very thankful and appreciative about that and, and she still has it uh, in one of her drawers at home. So I thought that was pretty cool. Thank you for listening.